Well, welcome back to the Cordell and Cordell and Men's Divorce Podcast. I'm Scott Trout, Managing Partner and CEO. Continue to bring you four guys information before, during, and after divorce and topics related and interesting for guys who are considering divorce in the middle of it and even post-divorce. And today is no different, but keep in mind, as always, we urge you to schedule a consultation. You can do that at 866-DADS-LAW. Check us out on the web at cordellcordell.com because that cannot substitute or be a substitute for this podcast. We don't want it to be legal advice. It's not more as an attorney-client relationship. Obviously, as we go, we just want to give you tips, tricks, information, education, uh, and some speaking and talking points. You can take this to your lawyer, and whether it's us or someone else, just find someone who practices exclusively in family law. So check us out on the web. Check out our YouTube channel. It is filled with all kinds of resources just like this, and we want to continue and have you subscribe to our podcast so you get alerted when we do this twice each week. And check out our virtual town hall coming up in March here. We want you to join and register, and log in, get on live, ask questions of the Cordell and Cordell panel and get answers right then and right there during that live virtual town hall so you can interact uh, with the attorneys and, and get some uh, direction for you. So let's get started today. Uh, joined is a senior litigation partner. Andrew, welcome back. As always, good to have you. Good to be part of this. Yeah, thanks for joining up in Massachusetts. So today we're going to talk about something that, again, we're trying to find topics that we haven't addressed uh, over the last 13 months, and that is prenuptial agreements, which is a big one because, you know, you hear quite often whether someone's getting married or, hey, did you sign a prenup? Do they really know what that means? And so the good part of uh, breaking this down is it, it really can affect them. Um, we can talk about post-nup, prenup, whatever it may be, different factors, but maybe break it down. What really is a prenuptial agreement? The idea behind a prenuptial agreement is in modern times, courts have recognized the importance of uh, wanting to give parties the ability to um, determine what's going to happen with their the marital estate um, should they ever be divorced. And courts want <clears throat> to allow parties to say, all right, I'm coming into a marriage with a business or these pieces of real estate. And during the course of the marriage, I want to keep those pieces of real estate separate and not subject to division should the parties ever uh, divorce. Um, and so a prenuptial agreement allows parties to determine um, the right to self-determination is very important. Um, rather than leaving it to a judge to say, all right, well, I came into the marriage with this 401k or I came into the marriage with this piece of real property. And should we ever divorce? that piece of real property or that 401k is going to remain on my side of the ledger um, and not be subject to division um, as part of the divorce. So you think about it, I mean, it's such an interesting topic because, you know, whether it's young or, you know, some young couples roll into and they have money from family money, like you suggest, and, and you want to protect things. So what can it do for guys listening? What can a prenup do for them realistically in a, today and, and moving forward as they, they kind of get into marriage and, and moving forward? It can make a divorce, should you ever have to be divorced, and, and of course no one ever wants to get a divorce, but should it happen, um, it can make the, the uh, divorce process a lot more streamlined and can save you a lot of time and effort um, it, during the, the divorce proceedings themselves. Um, a lot of times, let's say I have a business and I come in a uh, family business and um, I come into the marriage and you know, my father built the business and I continue to work for the business. As long as the business is maintained and uh, separately during the course of the marriage and only my paycheck from that business is deposited into a joint account, my interest in that business would be um, maintained as separate. So at the time of the divorce, um, my wife would not be subject to receiving a portion of the, that business. Mm -hmm. The idea um, behind a prenup is that when you go in to, to do this, um, you want to have full disclosure. You have to provide um, your attorney a list of all of your assets, income, and debts, um, as does your fiancé, and they have to be provided to your attorney. And you know, you think about the list, I mean, it, gosh, it's such a delicate subject. You know, you're dating, you're engaged, and you're like, oh, by the way, I kind of want to keep what's mine. You know, it's, it's a really difficult conversation, but I think if you look at it from the perspective as maybe you suggest, hey, it does kind of orderly in the event something were to happen, you know, God forbid, and that is you get a divorce, 
it is orderly. I mean, you maybe save on fees and, and things. This is just the way it's going to go. And there's an expectation of, hey, I don't want to fight. I don't want to, you know, take from you. And it really matters. I was consulting with someone who, you know, their family was very successful. And the father had provided quite a bit for this son. And, you know, he was just being careful. And I think the father was like, look, this is the only way this is, I'm going to roll this down to you is if you get a prenup. And it was a good explanation. And, and uh, his spouse was very understanding. And uh, I mean, look, they're getting into it, not with the expectation of a divorce, but um, just make sure everything's clear. And I think as you kind of talked about somewhat of disclosing your assets, maybe let's walk through what the requirements are. Now, there are all kinds of requirements and timing is one of them, which I'm always curious to talk about. But maybe let's talk about specifically some of the general requirements for a prenup so people understand kind of what they'd have to do. Well, the first requirement, and I do these all the time, on most states, in order to have them enforced at the time of the divorce, they really want both parties to have been represented when the prenuptial agreement was negotiated. And it is always best to use an attorney who specializes in family law and is regularly drafts prenuptial agreements and isn't a general practitioner, isn't a business lawyer, isn't just some family friend who puts it together. You really want to use an attorney who, um, who knows uh, family law very well because one of the challenges that's often brought um, should a uh, spouse want to not have a prenuptial agreement enforced at the time of a divorce, well, they'll say, well, I wasn't represented by someone who really specialized in family law. I wasn't aware of my rights that were being waived. So your attorney should make sure that you make sure that your fiance is represented by uh, a specialist in family law. And I frequently will make recommendations to my clients um, of who I would like them to reach out to or have their fiance reach out to to represent them. Um, because I know that, that other attorneys are respected professional in the field. Um, and we'll give them good advice. The second element of it is you want to, uh, you have to make a complete and accurate disclosure of all of your income, assets, and liabilities. And generally what happens is that list of all those items is attached as a, a schedule to the prenuptial agreement, mm -hmm. one for you and one for your um, fiance. And so you, both of you have a complete understanding of the financial circumstances of the other party's uh, world, if you will, um, going into the marriage. And the function is that everything listed on your schedule, and let's just say it's Schedule A, that is going to be considered non-marital. So when you're, when and if you're divorced, that stays over in your side of the column and is not considered part um, subject of division. And everything, if your fiance's uh, items are listed on Schedule B, those items are going to be off, this, uh, off the uh, table and put off mm -hmm. to the side for her. Um, and you're protected, so you always know that uh, whatever you bring into the marriage is non-marital. You want to be careful, um, and this is something you should really do discuss with your attorney, um, what you need to do to make sure that something that you come into the marriage with um, such a, a simple one is a 401k. Let's say you've been working for your employer for 10 years and you have a 401k. Um, you want to make sure that you maintain that 401k separate. So you may want to stop contributing to that 401k and open up a separate retirement account. So there's never any marital asset that goes into the 401k account that you came in with um, to say that it's, it was mixed. So again, that's a subject beyond um, this podcast, but you should really discuss that with your attorney. Yeah. You know, I think about this list. I mean, I've had it. I'm sure you have. You know, you, you suggest everything has to be listed. There's this tendency to think, well, I don't, you know, I'm going to hold this back. I mean, anything you do in that regard jeopardizes the viability, the long-term, you know, legality and enforcement of this prenup, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, the, and that's where I think you see some litigation. You know, you go through all this effort, this, the attorney's fees, um, and you aren't fully, you know, I guess, transparent. And why not be at this point? Uh, might as well get it all out there, get it all on paper. Don't, you know, hold, don't hold anything back. Um, that's so key. Even in the toughest of times, there are usually opportunities for relief. 
Many husbands and dads listening now are struggling to stay current on alimony and child support orders. You should know that this crisis may allow you to modify your support obligations, but time is of the essence. If you're a guy needing help right now, not someday when things are back to normal, call us at Cordell & Cordell. This is what we do. And then really, as we go back, I, I wanted, you know, you mentioned, you know, both parties being represented that I, you know, it, it's, it just, it's a must. And I think from your fiance's perspective, I, I know I've had hit this where they say, well, I don't want to, why should I go spend money to give up? You know, I don't want to, I don't have it. I don't want to go spend $10,000 or $2,000. So I've told our clients, I don't know about you, look, you let them pick uh, their attorney of choice, but you just say, I'll pay for it. I don't know what you do with that. Absolutely. I, I, I frequently say that. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, in this day and time, um, if you're going to want a prenuptial agreement, I think it's helpful that you go into a marriage where you have an open and honest understanding of what your finances are. So one way of looking at it is if your spouse and box at the, I mean, your fiance spot, um, box at the idea of a prenuptial agreement, it, it can lead into a discussion of, of what you want your marital finances to be. So there's a benefit to it. So you, you don't get into the marriage and, uh, and you just rolling around not knowing how you want your finances to be managed. So I, you know, it can be a sensitive subject, but it can also be an avenue to help prevent controversy once you are married. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, you think about, um, what's in there. Now you mentioned early on the importance of making sure that you consult with an attorney that is in family law that practices exclusively. And I think what you have to look at it as is what you're doing, albeit it can be extremely creative, which is very advantageous. Um, it's no different than us preparing a settlement agreement in a divorce, right? We're dividing assets. We're uh, allocating spousal support and providing for the calculation of it and the formulation of it. Um, and there's also tax ramifications potentially, meaning that um, if you're going to be assigning yourself a taxable piece of property, but yet in the prenup, you're going to give her a tax free, we may have a disproportionate valuation issue moving down the road. You know, if you take a 401k, but you give her cash, there's a tax consequence allocated to the 401k when you withdraw it. So that's really not the value is not equal. So I think it emphasizes, as you suggest, the importance of consulting with someone who's one who's family law and two who's done this and maybe has some of the creative ideas because i can tell you that all the prenups i've done none of them are the same i mean i think that's what's uh, the, the, the wonderful part about a prenuptial agreement is there is a structure but the content and the you know the elements of the prenup can be very uh, personalized it's almost like an estate plan Right, and, and you can personalize your estate plan, and that's what we're trying to get across. So I think one of the questions I get is, okay, not only that, I'm good with the way we divide property, I'm good with the way I'm providing for alimony or maintenance, but I also want you to put in there, I get the kids. Can you do that? Absolutely not. Yeah. There can never be a provision included in a um, prenuptial agreement concerning your children. Whatever happens to your children, um, child support and custody, that will forever and always be something that is solely within the purview of the court if and when your fiance were to ever be divorced. Yeah. I mean, likewise, like you said, you can't even uh, provide for no child support, right? And, it, and it's still going to be up to, I mean, even if it's in there, there's a, I think it's called blue pencil. The court has the authority to strike a provision out of the prenuptial agreement and, and enforce it according to the laws, right? Yes, absolutely. And one, the safest thing to do is don't even try. Yeah. If you know that it's not going to, uh, and have this conversation with your attorney. If you know that this is not something that uh, is gonna, really going to float when you go to enforce it at the time of a divorce, don't give them a reason to try and challenge the prenuptial agreement. If you know that you know you, there's going to be this huge income disparity between you and your fiance throughout the course of your marriage, don't put in there a complete alimony waiver, because um, yeah. that's just going to be something that, that they're going to they're going to argue about um, at the time of the divorce. However, I mean, again, this is something that you can discuss with your attorney. If there's going to be some income similarity, it might be advisable to put in some language about alimony. Yeah, I mean, you come in, sign the prenup, making fifty thousand, 
15 years down the road, you're making 50 million and you've uh, eliminated the idea of alimony. I think that's going to create a problem for you, right? Just slightly. Yeah, just a little bit. The pimple on the elephant kind of notion that it's, you know, that payment that you may make is a pimple on an elephant comparably to your income. Um, but I think it is. You just have to be, that's the point, I think, of having um, an experienced, uh, trained, qualified family law practitioner who's done it. And there are, it, you, this can be the most advantageous tool that you use for planning. And uh, take the time and, and the, the investment the consultation, the time spent is worth it. So we're talking about timing as we get close to the end of our podcast today, timing. So uh, I'll give you the, the uh, scenario, Andrew. I'm getting married next weekend. I'd like to do a prenup. How about it? No. <laughs> Delay yeah. the marriage. Right, um, exactly. We need time. Um, most states have case law that says that if a prenuptial agreement is um, executed even hours before the marriage, it can still be enforceable. But the problem with that is you want to give your attorney the uh, appropriate amount of time to figure out what is in your estate and make sure that it's listed appropriately in this, um, the schedule of your assets. And you also want there to be enough time between, for no negotiation between you and your attorney and your fiance's attorney. And so if you're just doing this the last minute, um, you know, that's going to be problematic. So yeah. if you think about it, um, Keep it in mind and do start it, you know, several months out at least, I would I'd advise. Yeah, I mean, I, I, all the case law I've read, I mean, the ones that always stand out to me are related to time, pressure, uh, the, the feeling of I have to do this, you know, the, the, the impending wedding and you drop the bomb and where they say, well, you know, I didn't really have an appropriate sufficient time to have a full understanding of, of the property, the resources available uh, that I'm waiving. Uh, I didn't have an opportunity to hire an independent counsel who could really uh, evaluate, uh, perform discovery, look at current values. I mean, I'm thinking that in the conversation I've had with my clients is, look, might be able to do it. It may survive. But when we talk about might and may, that's not a good investment. You yeah. know, well, this, you know, this exchange fund, it might rise, but it may plummet. I mean, I, you know, there's not many guarantees out there, but you want to make really sound investments and, and timing is one of them. And it is, it's like, look, get started well in advance. There's always something that happens in the drafting and in the execution of the prenup. And there's questions when you get another, and look, you get two lawyers in a room, there is 99.999% chance that they're going to find a disagreement in something. That's why we have lawsuits in this world. You and I will have a disagreement immediately on something. And so we're going to need more time. And you're just jeopardizing the value of this prenup, the, the whole point of it. And, the, and why bother? Uh, that's the thing. I, I'd rather take our chances in, without it than with it. You're spending a lot of money to fight something that has a pretty good chance of being stricken and set aside based on timing. And if you, you guys listening, you go look at a case law as to why things are struck. And that is you deal with custody, you deal with child support or timing um, or not full disclosure. I mean, all the elements you talked about today are all the reasons why prenups are set aside. And, but, you know, a, you know, skilled counsel can get this done. But timing, and now as we end on that, that's because it's, I think it's a good one to end on today. And that is make sure if you have questions and you're getting married down the road, start that consultation now, right? Absolutely. And no matter what you spend doing that prenuptial agreement, I guarantee you that you know, several thousand dollars to do the prenuptial agreement now is going to save you many thousands of dollars if you ever have to go through a divorce. It, it, uh, it's, it's, well, it's a good investment. Um, and, and one interesting thing, and I'll throw this out there, just I'm curious your thought. I, the one I, I recently dealt with, and I, I can't remember if you were involved or not, but it was, um, we wound up with a choice of law. And the client had uh, property in a number of states and so this it gives you another reason we think about timing. That's why it came to mind was we wanted to evaluate what the appropriate state was when it came to child support and spousal support. And uh, we looked at, you know, a number of states like New York and Michigan, and we determined that Michigan, I think, was the appropriate place. And uh, because, you know, if they got divorced, uh, we, our client may far um, be better off if, 
proceeding in Michigan. So um, we had to have justification for it. They were going to relocate to Michigan. They already had property in Michigan. She had property in Michigan or she had connections with Michigan. So again, that's another uh, thing you think about timing is let's give enough time to do a full evaluation of what is the right uh, choice of law here to apply? Because that's something to be considered, right? Absolutely. And it's a fine yeah. point that, again, could uh, help benefit you in a divorce should it ever occur. Absolutely. Yeah. And that happens whether it's prenup or not. I mean, I've had clients say, hey, my wife now lives in Kansas. I live in Missouri. What's the best state for me? And that means we're going to pull some things. And I just know off the top of my head that alimony is going to be number one. Kansas is far better. It's limited. Uh, you know, I think it's 121 months where Missouri, it's open-ended. So, those are the things where you find a, a skilled practitioner who's experienced in this area is going to give you good recommendations, put you a good strategy together uh, for the money that you're paying as you want this to be, uh, you know, the best possible document that you've got. So, Andrew, thanks. I know it's always, you know, something we could talk on for an hour on, uh, but, you know, give guys just some uh, snippet. But uh, thanks for joining today. Absolutely. So if you want to get more information, you can schedule a consult, 866-DANS-LAW. Obviously, we're around the country, including the UK. Andrew up in Massachusetts and Boston. You can schedule a consult with him. Uh, happy to meet with you. Check us out at CordellCordell.com. And also, again, that YouTube channel, it is full of resources for you with podcasts and virtual town halls just like this, covering literally every topic uh, that guys face before, during and after divorce, check out the virtual town hall coming up here in March. You want to register for that. You can only do that at CordellCordell.com. Check out social uh, on Instagram and Facebook for us and our podcast twice each week. So and you can also send questions to town halls. That's town halls at CordellLaw.com. If you want us to answer those during the town hall and you don't have an opportunity to log in live, you can check it out on uh, post recording. It's going to be posted on social media and you can get your uh, question answered. So town halls, at CordellLaw.com. So until next time, have a great rest of your week.